my friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another reading vlog. I believe in this reading vlog we will be reading Macbeth and Fellowship of the Ring, but maybe some others will slip in there. I never truly know when I start these vlogs what's going to end up happening, but for now that's what we're reading. I am getting ready for the day, which is usually when I like to film vlog clips just because I'm in a chatty mood and also because I have some reading updates, particularly about Macbeth. Because I went to visit a friend for a week in Puerto Rico and I took Macbeth as my like airplane companion, but I wasn't filming vlog updates while I was there because I wanted to just spend time with my friend and just enjoy my time off of work. And so I didn't read, but I did read in the plane. So I have some updates about Macbeth because, oh my goodness, I, I know it's one that I kept saying I need to read it, I need to read it, I need to read it, and I said that for quite a long time. I know Sarah told me particularly, I know Macbeth is one of her favorite Shakespeare plays, and we've been reading Shakespeare together for the past, like, year? I think year. Actually, yeah, all of 2022. Actually, like, time is a blur, so I always lose track of time, but it's been a year. We've been reading Shakespeare together, and she's my Shakespeare buddy, and she has been like you need to read it. I knew that, I knew I needed to read it just because I do love Shakespeare so much and how could I have not read Macbeth? But I'm about halfway through, I think. I think I've hit the halfway point and it is so good. It's definitely one of my favorite Shakespeare's that I've read. I forgot what ranking I gave it when I was talking to Sarah, but I know it's not gonna overthrow Julius Caesar because I don't think anything can do that. But I do think it might become my favorite tragedy after Julius Caesar because I already love it so much and I love Lady Macbeth. I think Lady Macbeth has been my favorite character and she her speeches have been so iconic already. And for a little bit of context on what Macbeth follows, Macbeth follows Macbeth who gets visited by these three witches and these three witches, they predict one thing and then they're like, and by the way, you're gonna be king. And the one thing that they predict comes true. So then that gives these witches credibility and so Macbeth becomes convinced that he can become king if he kills the king. And Lady Macbeth is the like absolutely fantastic almost villain, but not entirely a villain who is gonna help him get this done. She is like, we're doing this. You might not have the strength and determination to do it, but I do and we're gonna do it. And it is such an iconic, I don't know, I think what Shakespeare is doing with gender is really interesting when it comes to Lady Macbeth. And I think it's often interesting to look at gender in Shakespeare plays just because like ideas about gender and gender conventions were very particular for Shakespeare's time and so anytime Shakespeare does something that is bending gender conventions I think it's super super interesting. Lady Macbeth has one speech where she is talking about how she is going to I think she literally says she is going to get rid of her milk or her milk is going to dry up or something like that. I forgot the exact line because my memory is not photographic and there's other like scenes like that where Shakespeare will drop little lines like that like where a woman will be crying or like a woman doesn't want to cry and it'll be like I have to shed my womanhood to not cry. Things along that nature are really interesting to me when it comes to Shakespeare and Lady Macbeth is iconic because she just has such good lines and so I'm really enjoying Macbeth so far and it's definitely one of those plays where I'm like I finally read it or not one of those plays but one of those works where it's a classic and then I finally read it and I was like, oh. It also happened to me with Lord of the Flies. That one took me a long time and then I ended up really enjoying it. So it's happened to me before where I just take an incredibly long time to read really, really popular classic books and then I end up loving them. But Macbeth, I think, has been the one for me that has taken the longest, but I'm definitely glad that I've started it and that I'm reading it um, in my area. I believe Macbeth is going to be playing this year, and so I really want to see it. Sarah, you already know that I want you to come visit me and see this play because it would just look so iconic on the stage, I think, and it would just be a great, great show to see because it's a great, great play. I really, really would have loved to talk about this one in my Shakespeare class, but I guess 
there's only so many we can fit in. I think if I had taken Shakespeare too, it was on that reading list, but it wasn't on my Shakespeare reading list, unfortunately. And I did start The Fellowship of the Ring, which I am very excited about. Another one that's taken me forever to read. I, I feel like I have wanted to read this, or I've been saying that I'm going to read this since I don't really know, but for a very long time. But I put it off for a really long time just because I've heard some things about it that kind of put me off. I've heard about the descriptions of trees, and if you know me, you know I don't vibe with nature descriptions almost ever, except if it's like Thomas Hardy. But even then, I have a limit. Like, I don't want to read about trees. And you might be like, you're the biggest hypocrite alive because you will read Victor Hugo's sewer tangent. But that is the exception, not the rule. And so I put it off for quite some time. But I know Lucy from Crescent Pages loves, loves The Lord of the Rings and she loves Tolkien. And I trust her taste in books because now it's not just like a faceless mob telling me that The Lord of the Rings is the best thing ever written. Now it's somebody that I know being like, I love this so much, I love this author so much, and so I have more hope now. I will admit I'm still a little bit scared about the upcoming tree descriptions, not gonna lie, but I've read, well, I've read like a chapter and a half, and it's cute, I think it's cute. I like it so far, I'm liking the writing, I'm liking the build up to whatever we're gonna get. I honestly don't know much about The Lord of the Rings, so I could not tell you what we're gonna get, but I'm liking it more than I thought I would. I don't know why I thought from the beginning I would just be like, no. Maybe it's because The Hobbit wasn't really like my favorite thing ever, but I think I'm liking this more than The Hobbit based on my one and a half chapter, but we are very, very early on. I'm going to keep an open mind about it. There's also Bill the Pony. I know Sarah really likes Bill the Pony, I think, so. I'm excited for it. I was hesitant for a long time, but I'm gonna do it. It might take me an entire year and a half to get through these three books or technically do this one book because it's one book that was split up into like three for publication. That's okay because it'll get done eventually. Even Les Miserables took me like a year and it's my favorite book ever. So it's just a me thing. It's not gonna be like because I hate it. I'm also going to film a video today right after I finish what's going on here. I was going to say, because I'm not gonna waste my made up day, even though I literally just did the most basic like five minute makeup, but I am going to someone's birthday party today. And so the effort that's being put into this is a little bit more than it would usually be. Even though I don't like know the quote unquote dress code for this party, I should have asked, but then I forgot. And so we'll see. Aimless, aimless rambles in the morning because I haven't finished my coffee yet. I made, a lavender iced coffee, which I was very excited about. And as soon as I said, we're having pointless rambles, I'm gonna start on another one. I bought lavender coffee syrup, and also I'm waving this pen around, I don't know what's going on. From Marshalls, they have like the huge like bottles of coffee syrup, and I was searching the flavors and I saw lavender and I freaked out. Cause I love lavender and rose coffee, like I really, really like floral, flavors in my coffee. And now I can make it at home. So my nice little weekend coffee today was a lavender iced coffee. And that is going to actually be the last ramble of this clip. I will see you in the next one. say welcome back but this is the same video so maybe that's not quite the correct terminology but it has been about a month and a half since I filmed that last update of me getting ready to go to my friend's birthday party it has been a month and a half and I'm still reading the same books I am still reading Macbeth and I am still reading Fellowship of the Ring and I am going to get ready as I talk to you all a little bit about my reading and life updates and all of those things because I feel like that's just the easiest time for me to chat and do these kinds of updates. So first off, we can just start with a bit of a life update, a bit of a justification, I suppose. Overall, it has been a year of very sporadic reading and I feel like that's something that I have been saying for a while and it is because there has been a certain thing that I've been working towards this year that I haven't been able to reveal yet. And I can kind of reveal it now by vague subtle hints that I will be dropping, 
but I can't fully reveal it yet. And so just know that while I don't necessarily feel the need to justify my lack of reading, I do feel the responsibility to be consistent on this channel and to share reading and just to keep up with all of that. And I feel like this past month, I sort of haven't sort of dropped the ball both on my reading and on my posting, but I'm hoping to sort of get a bit better in the coming months because what I have been working towards has been settled and it was just a path to get here. And it sounds very vague, but let us just say that there will most, most definitely be more reading that I have to do in the fall, in this fall. And so do with that tidbit of information what you will. I feel like some of you might be able to guess where I'm going with that very vague hint, but there has been a period of not reading because I've been working on a specific other thing and that thing is settled and I will be starting that thing in the fall. And so expect more reading and stuff in the fall. That's it. I think I've kind of, I've stretched it too much and it's too vague of a hint, but do with that what you will. All that to say, I have been busy. I did not really have time to read these past two months. I've been up and around doing things, having meetings, a lot of things have been going on these past few months. I am now in a settled place and I have picked up where I left off. And I also started a new book, which I am going to get into in a couple of minutes. But first I just want to start with Macbeth because that is the most tangible sort of update I have. I just want to say how much I love this play. And it, again, I know in my last update, I was saying how it seems silly to me that I hadn't read it for this long. I'm a booktuber, I love Shakespeare. Why haven't I read Macbeth? But oh my god, if Julius Caesar didn't have such like a special place in my specific Shakespeare journey, it might be my favorite Shakespeare of all time. And that's mainly because Lady Macbeth is my favorite Shakespearean woman that I think I have met. I was trying to think in my head of my favorite Shakespearean women. I thought of Hermione from A Winter's Tale. I thought of Paulina also from A Winter's Tale. I thought of Desdemona from Othello, Ophelia from Hamlet. I was thinking about all the Shakespearean women that I have encountered, Cleopatra and Antony and Cleopatra, another icon. But I think Lady Macbeth is so incredibly interesting and I forgot how much I went over Lady Macbeth in my last update. And it honestly just gets more interesting because I guess this is a spoiler, but when it comes to Shakespearean tragedies, like. I don't know, but you can skip to the non-spoiler parts if you would wish. Especially just because after the murder, the attitudes between Lady Macbeth and Macbeth are so, so incredibly different. And Lady Macbeth keeps making comments about how she's shedding her womanhood or how she's like being the man for the both of them pretty much. And I think it's so interesting because while yes, she did do that ritual thing to shed herself of any feelings of guilt or to shed herself of emotions. It's also just an interesting play on gender regardless and I think it's interesting that Shakespeare chose to have her perform that ceremony to rid herself of emotions specifically just because I feel like it almost gives him a pass to really really play with conventional gender ideas. Macbeth being the one that is filled with guilt, Macbeth being the one that feels like he went too far, Macbeth being the emotionally distraught one. All of these things that in Elizabethan England would be attributed to a woman. A woman would be the one crying, distraught, wringing her hands, insert all of the adjectives that you see in like Victorian Gothic literature or things like that. All of those things Macbeth is doing and Lady Macbeth is holding down the fort. And so it's incredibly interesting because I do know that there was that scene where she technically does that black magic thing and so it's a bit ambiguous and it's a bit supernatural. But I think Shakespeare uses things like that a lot to explore interesting aspects of society. Like one of my favorite parts of Julius Caesar, for example, is the politics. And I think he's really saying a lot about politics. And the cool thing about it is that it's set in Rome. And so it's not set in England because Shakespeare was performing these for royalty. He was performing these under the Elizabethan crown. You can't just go out there and say that the English politics, the English monarchy sucks. You, you couldn't do that. That's not something that he could do and keep making plays that it wouldn't have worked that way. And so he uses Rome as a backdrop to make political commentary because it was a step removed from the crown, but 
he is still clearly able to hit at some political things that are closer to home and comment on them in a way that's sort of covert. And so I think the gender aspect is really interesting with this, especially because there are like the supernatural elements that sort of give him a cover. I think it's been really interesting to look at. The rest of it is honestly just delightful Shakespeare wordplay, Shakespeare speeches. I have a bit left. I'm not finished with Macbeth because again, my reading screeched to a halt this past month just because I was putting some finishing touches on things, making some decisions, sort of just like finalizing the next chapter in my life, I guess, which sounds very, very dramatic. But when I make the announcement, you will understand. The next book that I technically would have to update you on is Fellowship of the Ring. Um, I haven't read much of it. I think I'm on page like 30, but from the first 30 pages, it just feels very like whimsical and delightful. I mean, delightful is like a strong word, but I feel like I always use like very strong descriptors when I talk about things. And so it just feels like a very whimsical book about hobbits and it's just very cute. I'm liking it, I think, more than I liked the first 30 pages of The Hobbit, if that tells you anything. I don't know, but I'm actually going to keep reading that because I am very intrigued. And then the next update, I'm hoping to have more on Fellowship of the Ring in particular. And the final book that I finally started, I have been so excited for this and I would have started it so much sooner under any other circumstances. It's just been a month. But I have finally actually gotten halfway through, so a bit more than started, The Secrets of Heartwood Hall by Katie Lund, who is books and things here on booktube. I know I'm going to go on and on gushing about this and about how amazing this is for Katie when I do my wrap up, when I do my first five books, which will either be the video before this or the video after this. So I'm not going to go through it all right now just because this makes me so, so happy and I could keep going on and on. But for the first half of The Secret of Heartwood Hall, I am really, really loving it. It is a gothic fiction novel set in the Victorian era, which I love. I love Victorian literature. I love gothic literature. And so this was right up my alley. And it also is a very mysterious, suspenseful book. It follows a governess, Margaret Lennox, takes a job at the mysterious Hartwood Hall. And we are obviously working towards a larger mystery throughout the book. But I think what I'm really liking so far is that there's a lot of littler like things that I'm learning even about Margaret herself there's a lot of little mysteries if that makes sense like there's a lot of little suspenseful moments that I think are really adding to my enjoyment of the plot I think sometimes when mysteries are just leading towards one big mystery it kind of can just be like okay when you figure it out you know and it like I did all this and the journey was for that but this is very entertaining throughout I think because there are little mysteries and things are slowly being revealed I think the pacing has been really good so far and I've really been enjoying my time with it I also really like Margaret as our main character learning about her story and about her past and how her past is slowly being revealed has been incredibly interesting to read about and I think this book has actually been the one that's sort of been lifting me out of my reading rut because yes I was busy but I also have just been in sort of a reading rut because I think what happens is when I'm reading book after book after book, finishing book after book after book, there's a sort of momentum that carries me through if that makes sense and then when I just don't read for months or for weeks or for whatever it may be, it's hard to just like pick that first book up again especially now just in the era of entertainment that we're in it is hard to like put down the phone sometimes and pick up a book and that's not what you're used to doing. I think I've been spending a lot more time on my phone than I usually do. Thank you for bearing with me throughout these sporadic reading updates and I will see you in the next, hopefully not sporadic reading update. Hello friends and welcome to an incredibly perhaps awkward, maybe spooky angle, but there was like a huge shadow of me in this corner and I got that out of the way by adjusting my lamp. So hopefully it's not a spooky angle, but it is a weird angle. And that is because I am doing my seasonal closet flip. I'm pretty much packing away all of my winter clothes and getting ready for spring because spring has sprung. I am so excited. The sun has really been boosting my mood recently. I've been out seeking the blooms, seeking the flowers, and my clothes will soon reflect that. So I thought I would do my final reading updates as I fold my clothes and 
reorganize them in my little closet thing. You're not just gonna be watching me fold clothes probably, I'm gonna be speaking, but for vlogs, I like to be doing other things. It's just because it feels like more of a casual conversation and so I like to be doing things. I don't know. But anyway, we're just gonna, we're gonna start. And I wanted to start with the update that I have finished The Secrets of Heartwood Hall. I thought it was so good and I know I didn't get into spoilery parts in the last bit of this vlog, but I think now I want to talk about spoilers because the first thing I want to discuss is Margaret's relationship with Paul, the gardener. Margaret is a widow, but when she takes this job at Hartwood Hall, she finds herself drawn to Paul, who is the gardener. They start a sort of secret relationship that has to remain secret because of their standing in the household, etc. And because Margaret is very, very recently widowed, but she did not love her husband. Her husband was very cruel to her, and so she is not necessarily mourning him. And I really liked how this relationship and how it was sort of compared to Margaret's relationship with her husband really played with the ideas of marriage conventions in general in the Victorian era. Because typically, you know, when we read Victorian literature, the relationships that we're reading about are either leading towards or are in marriage. And so it was really, really interesting to see Margaret, who is a widow, having this affair with Paul, but not wanting to get married ever again. That is not something that she wants. And what was really interesting is that at the end, Paul wants to get married. And that is where Margaret says, you know what, we want fundamentally different things. We're not gonna do this. And I thought that was incredibly interesting. I kept comparing it in my mind to Jane Eyre and that was really interesting for me because when you think of Jane she wanted conventionality because of her morals because of etc that's what Jane wanted but Margaret that's exactly what she did not want also I do want to talk about the mystery the reveal because I actually kind of think it takes a lot for me to be surprised at mystery books or crime books I joke that I have been apprenticed in crime literature slash the mystery genre just because i took classes in that and i like worked a lot with it in college and anyway that joke is just to say that i sort of think that it takes a lot to surprise me i've read a lot of crime books a lot of mystery books and the thing with novels is that there are tropes and so a lot of the times you can see things coming i thought i saw what was coming in this book and boy oh boy i didn't can i just say what i thought i thought that miss davis was isabella I never ever guessed that Mrs. Eversham was not Louise's mother, and I never guessed that Miss Davis was, and I never guessed that they were together. I never guessed any of that. I was like, oh my gosh, it was like reveal after reveal. And so I really liked that because again, it takes a lot to surprise me, and this surprised me. So I really liked that. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with this book, I thought it was a nice touch at the end that the hall burned down. And again, I think the ending was really interesting to read about just because the ending is Margaret wanting to run away and lead a completely unconventional life where she is denouncing all traditional aspects of society in the Victorian era, which again is very, very different than Jane. I think those are the main things that I wanted to touch on. The relationship with Paul, the conventionality that Jane has, but Margaret doesn't, and the fact that I was shocked. And speaking of me being a crime literature apprentice, actually, I started another book for my work book club, His and Hers, by... I could not even tell you. I will put the book here. I think it's becoming a Hulu show. I honestly don't know. This is another work book club pick. The last work book club pick was Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow, which I really, really, really didn't like. Now we have another one where I've read the first like few chapters and I'm not feeling it. The premise, I think, I haven't read enough to really like know the premise, but the premise is, is that there is a murder and we are getting shifting POVs from a man and from a woman and both of them seem very, very suspicious and it keeps slipping back and forth between them two. And this is not even me like turning up my nose at it like a snob, like I am a crime literature apprentice. Not even I feel like where I'm coming from with this, it just seems like this book is trying so so hard to be suspenseful that it's aggravating to me. Because to me the more a book is like trying to do something, the more it's not succeeding at doing what it's doing. Like if I can tell that you're trying to do something, that's not really a book that I want to be reading. I'm more of the type of person where I don't want to be able to tell that you're trying to do something super suspenseful and then have it like hit me in the face at the end. I would give a very specific example, but then, okay, I'm just gonna give the very specific example. Like the murder of Roger Ackroyd, like that's what I want. I don't want it to be obvious 
that there's going to be a twist, that there's going to be something that's going to really surprise me until the very end and then I want to reread the book and pick up on all the signs that I missed the first time. So that's my thoughts on that. I'm gonna leave it at that because honestly I feel like I always risk coming off sounding like a book snob or something and that's the thing with these work book clubs is that I do not want to come across as like the snob that doesn't like any of the books. So we'll leave it at that. I'm not liking how hard it's trying. Final update, I have made progress on Fellowship of the Ring which is actually very very exciting. I am now on page like 70 and again I do have to report that I do really like it. I think so far the writing style has been like fun and like mystical is that the word whimsical that's the word not mystical i love the hobbits and i do want to say that one thing that i specifically really really loved was the Gollum backstory that for me was super fun to read about because i always love villain origin stories and this one was i don't know if the word is necessarily unexpected i don't know i sort of wrote Gollum off as just like a weird character when I read The Hobbit and then when I got this backstory I was like wow everyone has an origin story even Gollum and I really liked reading about it. Other reading updates I think mainly just that it's been same old same old with Macbeth pretty much so I think with that I actually concluded folding my clothes and with that I think that's going to wrap up this vlog thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one